So, hi everyone, you're here tonight with Andrea and Kemba and we're on the Keen On You podcast and we would, we're ecstatic to welcome uh, our guest, uh, uh, just phenomenal guy who has, you know, amassed a great portfolio at a young age. Um, so our, our session tonight is how a 29 year old millennial started investing in real estate. Jamal Newman, he has, uh, I guess, illustrious real estate career already. <laughs> and so he's here to share his story and just, you know, share encouragement and, you know, how it can be done. So Jamal. Because welcome. it can be done. We know that. It totally sure. can be done. So Jamal, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And how I so met much. you, Jamal. Tell how I met you. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, so um, I was approached by uh, Toronto Life to be featured in an article. Um, I believe it was it was called the Rebound of Downtown or something something like that sort. Essentially, um, they're trying to feature people who had made purchases uh, during the COVID pandemic, and um, particularly in the um, let's say kind of downtown core area. It seemed to be where it's kind of become ghost town a little bit. <laughs> right, exactly. Where people were, were running away from it at the time. And so yeah. they were intrigued as to people that were coming in given that time. Um, I was one of such people and uh, yeah, they reached out and I, I believe um, Andrew, you've seen it online and, and, and thus reached out to me. So that's yeah, right. that's how we well, met. Well, <laughs> we're now neighbors. I'm like, I know, if that's you're right. We're gonna be in my neighborhood. We may as well know each other a little bit more. <laughs> That's right. That's right. The Liberty <laughs> Village area here. That's right. Yes. So thank you for joining us. And thank you for being so receptive to, uh, you know, uh, me reaching out um, through social media and connecting. So, you know what, I think it would be great if we could just get into a little bit about who you are. I mean, Kemba's already said that you're 29 years old, but tell us, uh, you know, some, give us some of the background of who you are and and maybe where you're from, where you were born, you know? Right, for sure, for sure. Well, first, I just want to say thank you for having me. Um, I appreciate you guys uh, reaching out and, and providing this opportunity. I think what you guys are doing in the community is great. So any way I could assist or be a part of it, like I'm happy to do it. Um, but yeah, so I was born and raised here in the GTA, but um, because of basketball, I was afforded the opportunity to go and finish high school and do my um, undergraduate degree in the US. Nice. Um, and then from there, I uh, graduated with a uh, bachelor's of science in biology. And um, when my student visa was up, I came back home. I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do, but I know I wanted to um, get into the field of healthcare. Uh, so my mom has always been very supportive of us, um, me and my siblings, whatever we wanna do, you know, she's got our back. She doesn't really push us in any particular direction, but um, whatever we choose to do, um, she just, ha she has our back. We kind of, um, you know, I have to think of it is like we're our own um, ignition and she's like the fuel to the fire. Right? Nice. That's a good mom to yeah, have. I yeah, like that yeah. analogy and <laughs> I, I totally support moms. Moms are amazing, right, Kemba? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are. They are truly amazing. And I think it's obviously her um, fueling your you know, ignition is great because it's brought you to here, right? right. And, well, that's fantastic. So she didn't have to tell you what to do. She just no, decided. No. Had to help exactly. you along the way. And, and really that's what, it's a good advice for parents, you know, when, when kids are, or young people in their lives are motivated, um, support that, encourage yes. that. So that's, that's really good. That's good that you had a, a, a super mom behind you. Jamal, sure. can I just ask you a question too in there? Um, so I know you said you went to school in the U.S., you were born here. Um, is your background um, Caribbean or like? Yeah, so um, I'm of um, Jamaican descent. So my mom's Jamaican and then she came over here um, and migrated to Canada and then I was born here, born and raised here. Okay. okay. Same, same. We, we sort of suspected that, but we oh, just yeah? had to confirm it. <laughs> yeah. I'm Jamaican as well. And, okay, okay. Uh, you know, there was a few little clues along the way that uh, made us feel that, you know, we were right. Sorry, Kemba. Kemba, Kemba is an outcast, though. She's St. Lucian. <laughs> oh, we're Caribbean nonetheless. We I'm kidding. Yeah. Under that. I'm we just poking at Kemba umbrella. tonight. We love it. The Caribbean is 
we're all Caribbean people and people of African uh, descent. And so we love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm similar to you in that my parents immigrated to Canada. Mm -hmm. I was born here. And, and so although I had a slightly different twist, I went back and I grew up in St. Lucia. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, which is, which is amazing. I'm, I'm very connected to St. Lucia because of that now. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I've only visited Jamaica. I don't know if I could stay there for that long of a period of time, although it's a beautiful place. Yes. It would be quite the adjustment. It's yeah. very different. It's a very different yeah. lifestyle for sure. Yes. So, so then tell us a little bit more now about, I guess, how um, you kind of talked about before being an entrepreneur, right? And so that mm -hmm. real estate investing just seemed to come later, but before all of this, yeah, so once I got back, um, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I ended up um, working in insurance, which is my job now. Um, I, um, I'm an insurance advisor specializing in living benefits and health insurance, and I currently work in education and engagement at the Ontario Medical Association. So this is right in my forte, being able to educate people and provide some, some advice and, and, you know, kind of guide them on their way. And I'm happy to share my story in real estate. But it more so relates to, like, the entrepreneurial side of me. Mm -hmm. And I got that from my mother, for sure. I definitely inherited that from her. She was that lady that was uh, selling hats after church, and she had a stall at the flea market. So that just kind of just came in the blood for me. Yeah. But yeah, the real estate thing. Um, so I was, I was always, like, I was kind of sort of born, like, with that hustler mentality. And then growing up, like, I always had a desire, um, like, a passion for design. Nice. So... Um, actually, when I was growing up, like majority of my academic awards were in art. And um, yeah, so just having those two, I was kind of always figuring out, you know, what could I do to, to, to do better off? What could I do to generate cash flow? What could I do to um, kind of put myself in a better situation? And I have to depend on my mother as much. And then the real estate thing, I mean, it kind of just came about. It came about, it was presented to me through... Um, any research and mentorship. And I actually have a funny story of like how I actually got that hustler mentality. I don't know if you have time to share it. <laughs> yeah, tell yeah, us, tell tell us more. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that as Caribbean people in general, when you say hustler, I think, yeah, you know, we're always trying to find a hustle and a way to make money. So tell me how. Yeah, so this, this actually dates back to, to middle school. I think it was like the sixth grade where, um, so my mom would always pack like the best lunches for us. She would have essentially some snacks that would include like Dunkaroos and gummies or a fruit roll up. And then like I'd have a Jamaican patty for actual lunch. I'd just be able to heat up. And then like one healthy thing, like a fruit and um, maybe some juice boxes or what have you. But anyways, I would, I would want to go and um, buy lunch at the plaza. Cause that's what the cool kids are doing. Cool kids would come to school with lunch money walk to the plaza, buy a hot first slice of pizza, but I wasn't given lunch money. I was given actual lunch. Yeah. Anyways, I started. <laughs> I think that it was a good thing, but I, I know. You know, here I know it's not. It's like, oh man, my mom packed me another good lunch, you know, when I could just go and get the, the best lunch, which is a slice of pizza. Exactly. I didn't like at that time, like walking out and open up your lunch bag. And it just wasn't appealing. It wasn't Anyways. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, so I got to the point where I was like, okay, I want to be cool. I want to go and buy pizza. So I was like, I'm going to start selling some of my lunch <laughs> to, like, other students. So anyone who, for instance, like, someone who got detention, couldn't go out and buy a slice of pizza, you can buy my patty for me. And, like, <laughs> Resort with this, yeah, with the snacks, it's like, if I wasn't too hungry, you know, the snacks that I was getting, you couldn't buy it in a single serving. You have to go to the yeah. grocery store, you get a pack of six. So I'm like, okay, I'll sell you my Dunk Cruise. I'll sell you my fruit roll up. And then eventually I was like, I was making, I mean, at the time I felt like I was making good money. I was like taking home like that is $20, good money. $20 a money week or so, you know? It's good. <laughs> yeah, but eventually like the teacher caught on and she was hearing about it and she called home and it was just like, you want selling his lunch? So I had to, I had to, I had to shut that down. <laughs> 
That's funny. I think but that's I understand. Deep foot, deep foot. You know what? Um, you, know, <laughs> you say this, you tell me this story, and I really like I've experienced it not that long ago with my own teenage daughter, right? Oh, yeah. Easy, it's the coolest in high school to bring a packed lunch or, mm. you know, even have mom, you know, make a warm lunch. She'd rather, like you, um, felt that little burning desire to go across the street and get a, pizza, a hot pizza slice, right? So yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I empathize, I understand. Yeah, and then after that, like, I mean, in high school, it progressed to like me selling shoes and ordering from overseas <laughs> and like getting people like the because we are into a Catholic school, so we had dress down day. So that's yeah. when you came with like the fresh gear, whatever you're wearing that day, that and help people get some some items from overseas and order that. But yeah, I, I went through it all, you know, tried many different things, but just through like I said, mentorship and research, I realized you know the way to build fundamental um, wealth and to obtain wealth and sustain it. Um, was through real estate and and that's where I got into eventually down the road and, and that's where I'm at now awesome and so that was you know middle school high school and you kind of brought us through to even you know like where you attended post-secondary right you mm -hmm. did you said that um so then like when did you start though because I mean you're 29 today when did yeah. you buy your first property and where right so my very first property um, so one of my first jobs when I got back from university oh. required a lot of travel. And I would always drive on the Gardner heading downtown and I would always see this, this pocket, um, the Mimco area. And it was mm -hmm. right by um, Park Lawn and Lakeshore there. Yeah. It was a nice little, it was like a nice pocket where it's like close to the water outside of the city, but yet still very close to the city. And I would, yeah. always, you know, I would always speak into existence like I want to live there. I want to live there. Like that'd be so nice to live over there. Anyways, Did that and, teach you to have this kind of mindset too? Was that mom? <laughs> yeah, mom, you know, she, she always preached about this power in the tongue, you know, you got to yeah. speak into existence and then with effort and, you know, determination, you could definitely achieve it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I kind of spoke that into this and that's exactly where I got my first place. Um, at the age of 25 is when I came to my mom um, with the idea that, you know, I would like to purchase this and, and kind of gave her a roadmap as to how I plan to do it. Um, so yeah, that was the very first place. How did you plan to do it? What was the roadmap, and did Mom agree? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, given my track record um, with handling money and she's seeing my hustle, um, she had a like a certain level of trust in me when it came to money. Yes. So I was I was saving and I was saving you know as much as I could, but I couldn't meet the demand of the market. Mm -hmm. So as prices were rising, I just couldn't save fast enough. And then I was um, educated on the process of refinancing. So with that, I'm sure some, you know, many of your, your avid listeners might be know, you know, that process and what that entails, but essentially she had a property where we lived. She owned that property. Was she and also in Toronto too? No, she was in Brampton. Okay. Yeah. I know Brampton, Brampton well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that yeah. where you went to um, a school as well? Is that? Yeah. Where? So okay. I did my, um, freshman, sophomore, and junior year at the um, uh, high school in Branson, St. Marguerite DeVille. Okay, I know St. Marguerite DeVille, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where I did it, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I came to the idea of refinancing, because I knew that, okay, if, I could, if she could refinance her place, it'd provide me the capital to, to put down on this place, and I, and I came mm -hmm. to the idea, like, if you get this, I'll take care of the loan, I'll take care of the payments, I just needed that essentially, like, like um, fuel to my ambition for that. that yeah, you were looking for her to, it's uh, like we partner with you to, so, so to speak, at least with a capital and these, mm -hmm. you were committing to her, she'd give you the capital and you would take care of all the associated expenses. Exactly, exactly. And um, that's the original JV right there. <laughs> I was going to, I was going to put it out there. <laughs> that's right. That's an excellent way that joint venture. Um, your mm -hmm. mom may not, you may not have called it that, but that is exactly what it is. It's a joint venture. Yeah. And I, I was just very appreciative of her, like willing mm -hmm. to, and actually going about it because, you know, in my culture, 25 year old son comes into their Caribbean mother asking for tens of thousands of dollars. She's just wondering, what are you going to do with it? I don't know if you're going to handle it properly, but yeah, she had faith in me, and um, I purchased that in, in 2016. So did you live in this? Like, were you purchasing it to live in it? Like, I know you yeah. said you loved the area, you were watching it, and, mm -hmm. you know. Speaking yeah, so of my, my, existence. My, pardon me, sorry? No, I was saying you, you looked it into it, existence. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I was right there, you know. 
but it got purchased and everything was closed and you know but i didn't actually end up living in it and it's it's crazy because god works in mysterious ways because it actually you know was to my benefit and it propelled me to where i'm at today yes so i didn't actually end up living in it um we ended up renting it out but um yeah the way the way it worked out for me not living there was the fact that i was the money that i was saving up to to live there furnish it have an emergency fund pay down the loan um my realtor has, was actually at the time promoting another project very close by another pre-construction mm. project and i said to myself you know so I was put, like helping you build that mindset of not yeah one. <laughs> exactly i mean i'm not a, i don't have a greedy mindset but i'm just like okay well if i can get another one why not you know what i mean yeah. if it's possible so i had the money saved there and i said okay i could move into this one pay the associated fees and whatnot and live out that dream of being you know my ideal location or i could put down on another project and kind of sacrifice that that small gain of not living there mm-hmm. and um so that's the thing that's exactly what i did I uh, ended up renting out that unit. Um, I had to give him a deposit structure of the of the unit that he was promoting. It was a project up at um, Kipling and Dundas by okay. um, the uh, Kipling Go Station and Kipling Subway Station. There. Okay. Yeah, and I figured, yeah. okay, this is this is a prime location. You're close to the highway. You're close to you know things that aren't going to ch- essentially change mm-hmm. in the near future. That being the highway and the subway. It's it's Etobicoke. It's 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 only rising. It's a yeah, great place. like and you did. I mean, you consider the amenities. You know, transportation. Like that's location, location, location. Exactly, like, which is number right? one. Yeah. So you know, given my background and just you know growing up with siblings and, and playing on a basketball team, like I knew the idea of just sac- small sacrifices for like a bigger picture. And the bigger picture for me was you know to to build up my wealth and, and get to that point where you know i could provide generational wealth and mm-hmm. and kind of progress that and expedite that that um that dream so forfeited living there rented it out and then i used that money to put down on that unit so that's how you got you property number two yeah i got that right. one and it was a free construction but even to this day it, it's not even finished yet. and that's what they made reference to in the toronto life article of a unit that was purchased around the 300 range. Mm. Oh, okay, yes. However, yes, yes. Um, we just recently got the um, the closing dates and uh, that's set to be closed this fall. Nice. This fall, okay. Yeah. So that's like two years later, right? Is it? Well, that one actually started, I actually did that one in 2017. So I purchased Lakeshore in 2016, was supposed to move into it, realized no. And in 2017 is when I said, okay, you know, I'm gonna use the money to put towards this. And that was supposed to be completed in 2019. Yes, that's what I was thinking. I right. thought, I think it was, it's customary that um, condos are late, but two, two years is quite delayed. Yeah. I mean, so I think was, COVID so, probably aided in exactly. some of that delay. Yeah, it was supposed to be 2019, and they said, okay, 2020, and then 2020 came, and then COVID was in, in like, came about. So 2021 fall. It's it's, yeah. it's it's happening. There's some good in in that in that it's the pro the value has gone up quite a bit, but that's a long time that they've had your money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it was it, it, you know, like I said, you know, God works in mysterious ways. We don't see yeah. what's happening in, in the forefront, but in the background, you know, it is just all falling into place and, and working out. That's By the awesome. way, Jamal, I, I have to just, you know, commend you on your faith and, you know, your mindset is amazing. You, you, you just, you know, you have a, a vision and you're, you're working towards it and everything you say is, you know, you have that faith and it's, it's really good. So, yeah. Well, and I think it's aided in how successful you've been and even how willing you've been to take risks, right? Because yeah. I, I mean, they're calculated and you've thought them through, but they're definitely still risks. For sure, um, for sure. And I think for most of our listeners and young people out there, they find it really challenging to get into real estate and to get into the market. But I think you've told us how you were able to overcome that challenge. I mean, talking to mom and showing her first of all over the years without her having to and you having to say I'm responsible mom I can do this you sort of she was able to see from what you've been doing your hustles your hard work your school 
um, your career that you were trustworthy to be a great part, you know, to lend that um, equity from her property to help you get started. And I think that a lot of our young people don't necessarily think that they can turn to their parents to yeah. ask. And it's, it's awesome that you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Me and my friends, we go by the saying of closed mouths don't get fed. So you have to ask, you got to open it up and, 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 you know, be available to opportunity for sure. Absolutely. And so I think that's one of the things that um, I hope that people can take away from this because really, we love stories that are motivational and inspire, but we want people to take action. And so yeah. to, to hear that there are options outside of working really, really hard and saving, which is tough, because mm -hmm. I agree, your savings can only go so far, even when you're living at home and saving, uh, you're still you know, you can't amass as much money as the current market demands. Like, I mean, I don't think that we can get into the market without probably less than 60 to 100,000 in yeah. Toronto, in Toronto. Um, you know, so that's fantastic. And why, why condos, do you think? Why did you choose the condos? Yeah, so the condo, um, they present a unique, unique, um, I guess, unique breakdown or unique, um, way of entering. payment structure like I, I i know that was one of the reasons for yeah. me yeah yeah so it's a combination for when i when i analyze it, it's a combination of two things one the payment structure and then the, the length of time to build mm -hmm. so yes. yeah. um the payment structure for like one, almost four years <laughs> or right exactly as you can see with the, the the unit at kipling yeah so the condos it allows you to to get in with you know a little bit of money and that's relative what a little bit of money is you know I mean, it's for some people, tens of thousands is a little bit. For some people, hundreds is a little That's bit. right. Yeah, but relative to what's needed for to, to get into the market, it allows you to get in with a, a very small amount. Save that money while the um, condo is building. So you're able to lock in a value at the time of you um, signing that contract. And then by the time that you kind of gotten to the point where all the money's due and you're getting to closing and you're getting to occupancy the price that you've locked in is more like most likely have gone up mm -hmm. I, yeah i agree yeah. for sure yeah so you're able to get in at a, at a value and then at a cheaper cost um in regards to startup cash and then yeah locking the value as it, as it rises mm -hmm. for sure that's right i i i do like condos for that opportunity to have that payment structure that means that you're not putting it all up front and you don't have to pay it all down and you have time to um you know not often it's four years but definitely a year or two or possibly three mm -hmm. to prepare yourself um i know that uh, i i did the same thing when i first started as a real estate investor i decided that it was easier to start by buying future builds and uh, new builds because i could then have that lengthy payment structure and that lengthy time to build right. now you didn't stop there no you didn't stop there you, you after those two purchases you did make another one too right yeah so that came into like what happened with the feature article at the time so in 2020 um i seen a unique opportunity it was, it was, it was actually crazy where we were seeing interest rates so last during, year so during yes. covid <laughs> yeah during covid yeah <laughs> i was um i was i was just seeing you know what was going on in the market what was going on in the news and interest rates were going down so i, I had contacted my my real estate um sorry my mortgage broker and my realtor and said you know what's what's kind of happening what's the reasoning and he was saying that people are looking for more space leaving toronto given you know the restrictions and whatnot so my mortgage broker um, he presented me with the idea. He's like, you know, your income is good. Um, your your um, tenant is paying, you know, a great rate, and you know, you're covering expenses of your rental unit. You know, you have enough equity in that unit now. This was the you, first property that you had the equity in. Yeah. So the one that I purchased using my mom's uh, refinance, the Lakeshore unit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so I got that in 2016. By 2020, you know, enough equity had built up. And then I realized, okay, you know, you have enough money in there, your, your income's well, you're covering expenses, you should refinance that one and, wow. and you know, buy another property, if not two, you know what I mean? Because the equity that I had built up was, was quite significant. Yeah. 
So you're in Toronto. You're you were in a good market in a hot yeah. like even in some of the best years of the two thousands, right? Right, right. 2016, 2017, amazing, right? So you had yeah. some good years. Yeah, I was very fortunate in that in that sense. And then he came to me, he's like, Yeah, you should probably buy another one or, or buy a couple. And, and I trusted him because you know, he, he doesn't just talk the talk, he walks the walk. He has skin in the game, he's doesn't it, he does it as well, and he has like a proven track record. So Although I so he's an investor dad. too. He's Correct. an investor, not just yes, not just a mortgage broker. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing. Like I lean upon people with that have you know actual experience is one thing to mm -hmm. say, but what's your execution like? Mm -hmm. So yeah, as much as I trusted him, I thought it was a crazy idea. The most I was thinking of is like, okay, maybe refinance, maybe take a a HELOC off of it, and you know invest in my retirement, put some money away. Um, I was recently um, that year planned on. Um, proposing to my um, now fiance, you know, maybe keep that for a wedding, what have you. Yes. So I didn't, they, 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 it wasn't on my mind to buy another one or like, <laughs> but yeah, he presented that opportunity. And after, um, you know, given what we're looking for, uh, we were able to, to refinance that the money that we got was enough to put down on, on two properties. Um, that being the one that's featured in the article, the one plus 10 in Liberty village, the Liberty village one. Yeah. That we moved into. And then, um, the uh, duplex that I got in Hamilton as well. Wow. Fantastic. And the duplex in Hamilton came ready with tenants for you, correct? That's correct. So yeah, part of the finances. So no brainer. Like, exactly. You know, I didn't have to worry about, you know, that carry cost. Absolutely. Um, you had to find something in this price range, find something that has a tenant, you know, when someone's willing to stay. So that when you go for financing, you're able to show more income, less debt, and that increases your uh, debt to service ratio. Look at wow. you. This is totally an, an educational um, opportunity for any of our listeners today because we're teaching them so many strategies, um, you know, taking out, well, first going to a loved one, a family member, mom, and borrowing to start your journey, right? Your real estate investing, not even moving into it, but yeah. using it to be rented, generate income, because I mean, those things alone helped you, um, you know, show income and also then build a lot of equity that you can then use to fuel these additional purchases i mean for sure <laughs> and buying with tenants in there means that you have income so that helps with the qualification right exactly, exactly. um i think exactly. along the way somewhere in our story you talked about too like i mean god works in mysterious ways so even as you were worrying how you were going to do all these things i think you some stuff changed at work as well yes that's right so um when I was purchasing those, um, it was it was a very risky move. Nonetheless, I tried to, yes. to mitigate that risk by having tenants and whatnot. However, Kipling wasn't finished yet. So again, purchase time 2017, that's almost finished, like in this fall. And to, to my concern to him, going to him was, hey, you know, this sounds great, but what will this look like for Kipling when we don't know? It's unknown, mm -hmm. the numbers and, and qualification and that. He advised me, it's like, you know what I mean? You got to live in the now. What's presented to you right now? Capitalize on those opportunities. Deal with that when it gets there. Yes. And it was very risky. I was aware of the risk, but I was willing to take it on. So we went with the plan. Mm -hmm. And then not knowing what would happen come financing time for Kipling. But shortly after completing those transactions, um, I actually got a promotion at work. Nice. Which mm -hmm. gave me an increase in income. And, you know, when we ran the numbers again, qualifying and financing for Kipling would be no problem. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. You, you're, and you know what? Blessed. It doesn't show on your bureau yet, so why yeah. worry about it? Exactly. I, I, I dragged my husband through a couple of those. It's like, it doesn't show yet. There are new builds. They're nowhere in our credit. So we can get we can get a new property for ourselves. Right, right. Um, but I agree. It's good to manage and at least have some kind of plan for mm. it so that you could, I mean, your work, having a gro um, increased income or a promotion, that all help yeah. aid in Mm -hmm. um what will transpire for this no this fall you're saying you'll be closing that kipling Correct. property yeah so mm -hmm. so it'll work out plus all the other properties really well not all but the other two are cared for one you're covering with your income the other one is covered by the tenants um, yeah, income. and income and it and, makes sure it's already tenanted as well yeah and your kipling property will also be tenanted right right that's the and 
based on the numbers, I believe you should be able to, just from you and I speaking before, you should be able to get income to cover that um, property because you got it at an amazing price back in um, 2017. Mm -hmm. Right, right, yeah. The, um, even with the dip in rental, absolutely um, um cost now and, and what a tenant or what a landlord could charge yes given the market and availability it still should cover cover the expenses considering how long ago i got it in the project yes mm -hmm. i think that it will i think the numbers will work quite well because the um the price point that you bought at was really good mm -hmm. and uh so it should generate the income that you need yeah absolutely so jamal like it 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 sounds like everything has sort of fallen into place like dominoes. Like you have, you know, you've had one win he's after like, another. He's been given, like the heavens just opened and him, like just kind of worked, everything just worked out nicely. The rays of light yeah. shining on you. So that's, that's amazing. But along the way, what would you say have been your challenges? Like what has been your biggest hurdles to overcome through, you know, all this amazingness? right so yeah um the biggest things have just been being able to manage risk you know being mentally prepared for what you're taking on a lot of people you know for either lack of research or um, lack of experience you know jump into situations where they're not fully aware of what could potentially happen so mm -hmm. just leaning on um like i said my mortgage broker who had been through it and getting advice from him but um yeah so he's like your mentor your coach exactly you know, he kept exactly. you like and he had experience doing what you were doing so that you he could guide you exactly yeah yeah so yeah risk tolerance is, is a big one um and then just knowing you know having faith that like like you said um Kemba, that you know things will work out but the one thing if i could have gone back and done differently um wouldn't have been to purchase a condo surprisingly um mm -hmm. as, as yeah as much as um well, tell us why, though, because I think it's important that listeners understand it's not that condos aren't good, but what is it that you needed um, that you didn't get or you wanted? Yeah, yeah. So the condos are, are, are a great entry point, and um, if possible, you know that is the way to go. If you if you know you have no other option, but given my unique circumstance where I was provided the refinance money for my mother, I had all the money up front. It wasn't like I had this to follow this structure and planning out, you know six months a year down the road i'll come up with the money so because i had it up, up front mm -hmm. i looking back if i can go back and i know i'm not going to end up living there i would have bought some uh, something freehold whether that be yes. a townhouse a semi or a detach mm -hmm. um, because the reason for that is that it allows for a little bit more freedom when it comes to building your wealth and building your portfolio like what as, what know, is it that you wanted from that freehold though yeah, so for one, with condos, um, you don't have the flexi like much flexibility when it comes to passive income yes. or um, cash flow. Rent yeah, cash flow, renting it out. Um, even if you want to do Airbnb, even short term rentals, it's very restrictive, right? The condo exactly with the corporation, you got to get sign offs. Um, even renovations within the condo, you know, you want to put up a wall or you want to do this, you got to get it signed off. With the freeway, you have a lot more opportunities to to do those things like short term rentals or or modifications to increase your equity. Mm -hmm. So although I did very well in regards to the equity produced on that property, if I had the freedom of a backyard, I could have put a pool. I could have, you know what I mean? Like you could do. No, understood. You know I mean, add a add a add a bathroom, finish a basement, stuff like this to build more and more equity. Other had two units have, like you right, do in Hamilton. <laughs> right, exactly. Use one of those units to generate um, superior cash flow, like on a short term rental. Because I agree, I think you brought that up when we first uh, met mm -hmm. that you would have liked to have the opportunity to get cash flow from a short term rental or an Airbnb, which is restricted in Toronto and restricted in condos. Exactly. You don't have as much doors to work with. And they refer to it as doors in regards to like how many units you can have in, in the um, 
in the unit. He's already got the language, Kemba. I did not have like those a, language in twenty in my twenties. Yeah, this is a seasoned investor right here. This is not a a, a newbie we're talking to. No, so, not at all. Yeah. No, at, at um, I didn't know about doors back then. I used to just think, <laughs> you know, doors were like how many doors I had in my apartment or my home. Yeah. And so, <laughs> I, I mean, Jamal, you 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 bring up a good point because when I think back to my twenties and you know me investing, I did purchase a property in and around twenty five to twenty seven, um, but. I, I feel like, you know, you having a mentor and a coach, I, I feel like I had some idea, but having that guidance is so powerful because you were able to take risks because you knew you had information, you had knowledge. And um, when I think back to me, I took another 10 years after I purchased that mm -hmm. property because I was figuring it out, you know, mainly on my own. And I'm like, this is a problem and that's a problem. Instead of sort of having that guidance, and yes. so I, I think it's amazing that you've accelerated your growth in your 20s and you've done what you've done so quickly. I mean, it's going to set you up to the next next level, like in no time. So as much as you might regret the condo, you know, restrictions, it's still been a fantastic, you know, model that you've used to to get you to the point where you're at four properties, you know. Sure. So I think... It, it's it's actually it's not a mistake i can see how you could have done <laughs> other things but it's it's a it's a good thing you did regardless so yeah no i think it's just a good realization that you know um the multi or the duplex for example could give you different options and it's yeah. good to recognize that yeah but you got the duplex now right yes so, got it now got it now but yeah like so, to your point kimbo like um you know, the mentorship, it, it, it pays dividend, you know, when mm. it's one thing for someone to just tell you what to do, but for them to have gone through it, because I mean, as you guys would know, you know, through your purchases, we haven't even touched on like the small details, you know, you hear about just the, the deposit structure, you know, you got to think about levies, you got to think about lawyer fees, you got to think about- Yeah, there's a lot of closing, closing costs. costs. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, you know, The closing costs, Jamal, in some cases could be equivalent to your deposit or your down payment, mm -hmm. rather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we're, we're actually covering closing shortly with, you know, a group of people. Yes, our, our it's, course. It's, there's a lot of, I, I think sometimes you don't realize how many details go into it at that sure. point. And, and sometimes you can get tripped up in that, and and that could even lose you your deal or you lose you your deposit if, if yeah. that isn't handled very well so yeah. yeah yeah and it's even one thing to like be purchasing something from the builder in comparison to purchasing something from someone else who might be looking to buy something else and it's like a whole chain reaction which is what we realized when we bought the duke because that was the first um non-pre-con yeah it's a resale that you bought exactly like, it's very different to resell closing and purchase mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and, yeah, no, go sorry, ahead, Andrew. Yeah, no, go ahead. No, I, I was, was just thinking of the lessons that maybe he can share, you know, yeah. like we'd like to have that summative, like kind of what are some lessons that you feel that would be noteworthy to our listeners and even a young person just getting started in real estate? Um, what would you provide them as advice? Yeah, so for one, I would just, I would say, um, you know, know your risk tolerance, um, uh, be patient, do your homework. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a grind. It's a grind for sure. But, you know, with determination and, and information, um, you can definitely do it, you know, especially my generation, the access to information, you know, we don't really have much excuse. You know, yeah. there's always somewhere you can learn, whether it's the internet, whether it's YouTube, whether it's, you know, even tuning into podcasts and, and and different um, mediums like this, you, mm -hmm. know, you can you can get the information that you need. Today, I find the well. There's a wealth of knowledge. Um, I mean, you've used your mortgage broker and your realtor to be a great uh, mentor. You know, mentor coach knowledge base. We have Facebook groups that help us today. The podcast. I mean, we just we're bombarded with it, but it really is valuable if you take the time and spend the time to use those mediums to learn. Right. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I totally agree. And then, yeah, having that guidance, that mentorship, someone to, to hold you accountable, someone to push you, you know, even for me, like as much as I, I hit these goals and these milestones, you know, as soon as I get it to it, 
you know, my dreams get bigger and, and, you know, my confidence to achieve those things, you know, increases as well. So, yeah. And then like, even just the community that I keep, we're not, we're not timid. We're not very like easily intimidated. So, you know, we observe someone else doing it, you know, my friends and I, like, we believe, you know, what makes them so special? Why can't we do it too? And, and you know, we put that into action. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i i'm hearing from you as well that those people and the peeps around you mm -hmm. are also important because it sounds to me not just are your mortgage broker and realtors you know um mentors and coaches but even your friendships and the relationships that you're building they too support and push and motivate you as well yeah for sure 100 percent. and then like even you know so i guess a key takeaway that i would have for for viewers is you know I'd want them to walk away with two words that I like have really played a you know a key role in in where I am and how I've gotten here, and that's teamwork and, and leverage. So okay. so firstly teamwork, I say that because you know having that mentorship, um you know I couldn't have done it alone. Having the help from my mother, I couldn't have done it, and then having my fiance, because as much as you know this sounds glamorous and sounds easy there's, there's like i said when we talked about closing classes there's, there's you know things that we don't know or things that come up mm -hmm. and you know there's ups and downs within the process it's, it's a lengthy process you know on average um a closing between purchase and, and getting the actual keys can be anywhere from like 60 to 90 days if not more so just having my fiance for the support of you know the, those ups and downs um really helped so that's that's the part of the teamwork and then the leverage aspect you know a lot of us we kind of limit ourselves to the resources present to us mm -hmm. you know yeah. uh, i only have ten thousand dollars say what can i do i only have five thousand say what can i do so you know using thinking of how you can leverage you know your money your contacts to to um get to where you're looking to get to being resourceful mm -hmm. so for instance someone who only has ten thousand dollars can't imagine, you know, buying a property, but, or buying, you know, a brand new car, or what have you. But if you use that $10,000, you invest it wisely, you work hard, you know, who knows what you could achieve with that and what it can generate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, Excellent. agreed. Uh, today, I agree. When I started, you know, 10,000 could buy a property back in the 1990s. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could at 5% down. Mm. Houses were a hundred thousand, and um, you know, townhomes in Mississauga were a hundred thousand. Ah, that somewhere else exist. in the world, it can still buy you a, a, a somewhere property. Somewhere else it's in the United States, the even world. probably maybe Windsor. Um, mm. uh, there are places still in Ontario, but it's very far and few between today. So I agree, ten thousand can't do much in the GTA, mm. and so, but there's ways to invest it and make it grow and turn it around. Or mm. we've already talked about how you could partner or joint venture or show someone how they could invest in you through real estate. And so there's many ways, right? We have to be creative. We have to look to um, those who have done it already as guide, guide, guidance and mentorship and coaching to, so that we can do it, right? Um, because sure. even in the GTA, you can still have it, um, that you can get it done. Not as easy um, without, I would say, right Kemba at least 60 plus thousand right to start so yeah you know there's options for first-time buyers but yes you do yes. have to have a, a yeah, bit as a first-time buyer for sure money so you know like Jamal leverage le leverage your network mother aunts family people who would be willing to invest in you because it is a trust it is a trust mm -hmm. um, um, that you're building and so yeah yeah so well Jamal let's Jamal, is there anything else you wanted to share? Maybe how someone um, could get in contact with you or, you know, maybe learn more from you. Uh, if, if some of our listeners are always, you know, interested in finding out more, how would they reach you? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I definitely, I definitely, you know, look to partner and get to the next level. You know, I have like development on the horizon and what have you, but um, yeah, it kind of feels weird you know, putting this out there, considering I'm looking for help as well, but yeah, you can reach Absolutely. me. In my <laughs> you have to do it, Jamal. We are looking for help as well, too. That's how we do uh, I understand. it. I understand. This is how we do it. <laughs> you can't yeah, do but, it. Yeah, but yeah, um, anyone can reach me at, um, my email address is Jamal Newman, first name, last name, at gmail.com. 
Awesome. And also I have an Instagram page, um, Jade underscore underscore Newman on, on uh, Instagram. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Speaking so. two underscores. <laughs> I <have> to remember <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Well, I think it's really important um, for our listeners to have, uh, you know, hear your amazing story and know that they can contact you, possibly reach out to you and partner for your maybe next venture. Uh, and I think, you know, we're always looking uh, as investors, as real, real estate investors, we're always looking to see how else we can get the next deal or the next five deals um, sure. to, to happen. And so partnering is the best way. And so let's see if there's anyone, Jamal, that reaches out to you and connects with you to get their first deal, maybe, or to utilize some of their strength along with yours. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And if anyone wants to contact me with, you know, going into depth in regards to the process, or I could also, you know, provide um, contacts in regards to, you know, who I've used to get where I'm at as well. They'd be happy to help too. So I'm open to that. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. So awesome. Well, Thank you. Jamal, it was, uh, a uh, really eye-opening conversation to learn about your journey and learn about you know what you've done and so thank you so much for coming on with us and sharing all this information because that's sometimes you know people don't get a chance to sort of call you up and say hey Jamal how'd you do that yeah, um, you yeah, know but sure. now they can listen in and they can learn from what you've done so so thank you so much for for doing that no thank you for having me like I said what you guys are doing is, is absolutely awesome you know, for <laughs> For the community and you know people just looking to get into the industry so any way i can help you know i'm happy to do so so this thank you for having me thank well this has definitely helped so thank you we appreciate all the information you've shared and now we know that there is going to be other success stories that will come from this you know using your story and this episode to build from for you know many millennials like yourself thank yeah, you i hope so i hope so so Andrea, just as our closing, can you just let everybody know how they reach us? Yes. So we are on every social media platform. We can be reached on Instagram at Keen on You. We're on uh, Facebook. We're also reachable through our website. And through our website, you can get to and contact us in mel multiple ways. So our website is www.keen, K-E-A-N, group.ca. So please, you know, take the opportunity to connect with us. We have many different ways to learn outside of our podcast. And we'd love to, like Jamal, share our knowledge with you and help you learn how to buy your first or your next. Mm -hmm.